Grit by Angela Duckworth. Welcome to my channel. My name is Samuel and I want to make self-growth normal. If you want to make self-growth normal because I don't want to do it alone and who doesn't want to make self-growth normal, then make sure to smash that like button. Grit is the hallmark of high achievers in pretty much every domain. But I think this is a really common thing. I feel like so many books are like, here, this is the secret to success. This is the key to success. In this review, I'm going to talk about the author's explanation of why grit matters, the four psychological aspects of grit, as well as what some of the, I love, this is one of my favorite part of my, a lot of my reviews recently, the top negative reviews on Audible had to say about it. The author developed what she calls the grit scale as she visited West Point to talk to different students and she came back with this like test of all these different, not questions, but like on a scale of one to five, how much does this describe, does this sentence describe you? The likeliness of success there and they tested this more than more than one year, obviously. It's determined more by their score on the grit scale consistently than anything else that they have apparently tested at West Point. Like from personality tests to like on traits like conscientiousness, extroversion, or agreeableness. For anyone who doesn't know that much about this stuff, that's insane. I took the test. My grit score is 4.5. There's also an analysis of talent, and the reality of greatness. My favorite chapter is called Grit Grows, where she talks about how grit and the passage of time go hand in hand. In dozens of studies that have followed people throughout years and decades, the trends are clear. Most of us become more conscientious, confident, and caring, and calm with life experience. Most of this happens between age, or the age of 20 and 40. No matter what age you are, I think it maybe, maybe it's a stretch for me to say this, but I think that if this is true, the most generally inevitable areas of growth in your personality that can be counted as benefits of aging, why wait so long? Just figure out how to do it now. <laughs> You'll be extremely far ahead of everyone else. Not, I don't know why you would want to do that. Not exactly to, hopefully not to rub it in everyone's face. Maybe you can inspire them to do the same for themselves. A little story time for those who don't know but are familiar with my channel. I tried when I was younger, maybe like, I don't know, as many as 10 different sports. I disliked all of them. The longest I lasted was tennis for like a year and the second longest was wrestling for like three months. Then I started playing piano. I ended up teaching myself by ear. I never took a lesson. I did that for eight years and got tired of it because I felt limited by one instrument. So I started making beats and then rapping and then singing and then I moved out alone to another city at the age of 19 and I put together six entirely self-produced concept EPs in three years and then I realized that the reason I was pursuing music was so much bigger than just my enjoyment of it in that process. I made all the beats in these videos at least a year ago. And all my solo music, by the way, is on my channel. But after I realized it, that reason, the normal, making self-growth normal, it became more important than my simple love for making music. And the lucrativeness of the music industry played a gigantic part in this too. So I was like, you know what? I'm done. I'm gonna review every single book and way more that taught me what I learned and wrote about about up to this point and I'm going to get a job in an entirely different industry too. Far, far more profitable where I can apply far, far more of the knowledge in these books. I went from construction to sales and I'm gonna make a far, far more colossal splash. But the biggest exception, probably the only one I can really think of, uh, to my experience with grit is stopping just the, the, the act of making music and all of a sudden I replace it with reviewing books. So let's talk about the four psychological aspects of grit. The first one is interest. A lot of commencement speeches at universities and the like are consistently including the do what you love instruction. But most of what Angela Duckworth calls grit paragons Paragons, isn't that such a cool word? What most of them say is that they basically just tried a bunch of different things until one of them eventually just stuck. Most of these commencement speeches will say, I couldn't imagine doing anything else with my life. I love doing this so much. No, that's false. I mean, maybe it's true, but at some, at many other points, they probably imagined doing many other things. If you are watching this and you have not found a passion to foster, don't focus on not having a passion. Focus on discovering a passion. What do you find yourself thinking about a lot? What do you find 
unbearable. <laughs> There's a lot of insight on those things in this one chapter. Aspect number two is practice. Practice is a positive mind state within grit. It's a persistent desire to be better. It's a desire. It's not like a thing that you cling on to and then you're, there's like a hole in your stomach that's like eating your brains. This isn't coronavirus. And coronavirus, I don't even think does that. <laughs> you want to become a gritty person? Or let's say you are gritty. Let's say you're a gritty person and you want to become grittier. Let me ask you a question. If you practice because you constantly want to become better and you're practicing something that you're genuinely interested in and find yourself thinking about a lot, how likely do you think you are to just give up when something goes wrong? This is just half of it, by the way. It gets even better. The third aspect is purpose, which in the words of the author is the intention to d d d d distribute, no, contribute <laughs> to the well-being of others. The chapter about purpose is it's so good that like I think it may just it could have been the the chapter that you like closed the book with but I mean uh, structurally it would make more sense to put it in here but it's just very inspiring it's like here this is why we do all of these different things could have been an estuary as I like to call on this channel it could have seriously wrapped up the book maybe I'm just a serious fan of purpose because it's the biggest far beyond myself aspect of grit. Aspect number four is hope. When it comes to optimism versus pessimism, optimism has higher results than pessimism in just about every quantifiable area of life that you can think of. And why is this the case? At least a desirable area of life. Like sucking at your job and disrespecting your spouse and not caring that much about your kids. I think more about pessimism when I think about those things. The author says it here. The data from the study of young teachers along with the interviews with grit paragons and a half century of psychological research all points to the same common sense conclusion. When you keep searching for ways to change your situation for the better, you stand a chance of finding them. Pessimists, they're just like, unless you're working on changing the, the notion that you're a pessimist, I would avoid pessimism at all costs. Negativity, in general, is a terminal disease. It is literally bad for your health, and the whole world is full of sick people right now, as long as they are not positive. And by positive, I don't mean test positive for coronavirus. I mean that they have positive mindsets, and the pessimists have a far greater risk of dying than the optimists. And it doesn't matter. Call yourself a realist. I'm not a pessimist, I'm a realist. Reality bends to the power of your thought, as long as your thought is powerful enough. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why optimism just kind of wins. After these is growing grit from the outside in, you learn about different mm, styles of parenting here and their effect on grittiness of kids as they grow up. Someday I will eventually just have a child. And at some point around that time, this chapter will definitely be re-listened to probably more than once. You also learn about grit playing fields and gritty cultures and organizations. Those two I didn't find all that necessary. They took up a decent portion of the book. A lot of the negative reviews. Let's talk about those negative reviews, guys. Only reason I'm talking about negative reviews, even though I was just, I just had a little rant about what's wrong with negativity, is so that I can take them and just, and just defuse them in front of a camera. Like here, this is what's supposed to happen to negativity. But a lot of them, as I was expecting, they noted her anecdotes that there are too many of them, and honestly, I sort of agree. Maybe not to the extent that they probably do. I kind of just don't think the story to study ratio, I don't think it's that out of hand. Someone gave it two stars, called it a nine hour commencement address, and said it doesn't fully explore goal setting in grit. After listening to the audiobook, I read that and I'm like, this is true but uh, I, I don't know, I didn't feel like I misunderstood the concept of grit. And I know that grit has so much to do with accomplishing goals, but I don't really know what it has to do with setting them. Someone gave it one star, called it a lazy rehash of other authors, accomplished authors, said the author doesn't have a theory. I don't understand the importance of having a theory. What is the necessity of a theory. And also, what is the trouble in reading or listening to one book when you're recommending three other ones to save other people the trouble of it? Instead, I ha I simply have not the book I don't think the book's perfect. I haven't heard a better audiobook on the sole topic of grit. 
I simply have not. I mean, the author talks about the book Mindset by Carol S. Dweck, but that book isn't about grit. She talks about Flow by Mihai Csikszentmihalyi, but that book isn't about grit. And she doesn't spend that much time talking about those books. So how is it a lazy rehash of other authors? Also, I don't even, like, where was habit in this? There's more to it than that, but generally people said it's, they also said that it's uh, unoriginal, not creative, nothing new. I really liked the four aspects of grit. And also the part about incorporating grit into, like, the cultivation of grit into your parenting. And I loved the chapter about growth of grit and how it's not a natural thing. All of those things, those are, I mean, those are pretty new, unique, and creative to me. No one else who talks about all the, the, the keys to success in these books. No one else is like, here guys, grit is the secret to success and all you need to know to cultivate grit is to cultivate these four things in your life. I've heard about each one of these aspects in different books, but not at all like this and not at all packaged like this. <laughs> None of these people said that they're giving, this is a reference to something in the book, but I've heard this in a couple other books too. None of these people said, I'm giving this feedback because I have very high expectations and I know that Angela Duckworth can reach them. And that is a half joke. If we get on the treadmill together, there are two things. You're getting off first or I'm gonna die. It's really that simple. Enthusiasm is common. Endurance is rare. Lectures have half the effect of consequences. There may be exceptions, but the rarity of these exceptions proves the rule. Fall 7, rise 8. It isn't suffering that leads to hopelessness, it's the suffering that you think you can't control. There's a world of a difference between imitation and emulation. Direction 1. I recommend this book for anyone who is either not doing anything, in particular with their lives long term, but is looking for something to do and isn't sure what. Either that, or someone who is doing something, but is, is maybe questioning themselves at this point. Like maybe this isn't the thing that I wanna do. Cause maybe it's not what I'm meant to do. There is some pretty deep stuff in this book as well that ties into what you're exactly meant to do. Direction two. If you like this book, check out Mindset by Carol S. Dweck, as well as Flow by, also by the Mihai Mi Chicksent Mihai and High Performance Habits by Brendan Burchard. Some ideas in there kind of tied into what I was thinking about when I was listening to this book. Grit by Angela Duckworth. There's a link in the description for anyone who wants to check it out and read the reviews. That and all the other books that I mentioned in this video if you want to check those out too. If there are any other books that you guys want me to check out and review, please let me know in the comments below and also let me know if you checked out this book and you liked it. But hey, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't already because I don't get why people watch this far into my videos and they don't subscribe. But if you have subscribed and you want to turn it up just a notch and turn on that notification bell to receive a notification every time I drop a new video, that would mean the world to me. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. You can find me everywhere and I will see you then.